And what am I supposed to tell you in words? Uh, how you would read the decimal mathematically. Oh, uh, point six t- hundredths? No, six tenths. Six point six tenths. Tenths. Um, they're like terms. Very good. They both have the same variable, so they're like terms. And the these ones. Unlike. They are unlike. Why on this one are they unlike? Because on because there's a like an exponent on one and not on the other. Very good. Exponent makes a huge difference. Excellent. I got one and two thirds X plus nine and three fifths Y. Very good. That's exactly what I got, except I accidentally wrote Y twice. (laughs) I just realized that's supposed to be an X. Excellent job. Okay. So you're pretty good with adding and subtracting like mixed numbers and stuff that don't have common denominators. You comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right. One more. This one has decimals instead. Okay. Doing pretty good. Let's move on. What is a function in mathematical terms? Um, I don't remember. You don't remember? That's fine. Okay. What do you think of when you think of the word function, even if it's not mathematical? Like the way something works. Yeah. The way something works. That's actually partially what a function is in math too. Um, it's something that works together. Kind of like the coefficient, okay? So function actually comes from the root word functio. I don't know if I'm saying that right because it's like Greek and Latin, but it means to perform. So in math, when we have a function, it's usually something we graph. It's something that performs a job. Usually we graph how much money we're making, okay? How fast something is moving. Um, We might graph how far something is going, okay? Normally with a function, it has a relation to a real world concept. So for example, We have a cute little function machine here. If I put in X, my variable, add cream, egg yolk, milk, salt, and vanilla, I'm going to get something out, all right? So this one makes ice cream. So if I put in chocolate syrup for my X, that is my input right here. I'm gonna pour in chocolate syrup and I mix it in with cream, egg yolk, milk, salt, and vanilla. What am I gonna get out of it? Ice cream? I don't like. What type of ice cream? Um, Chocolate. Very good. Don't overthink it. (laughs) Chocolate ice cream. That is a very large font, but I don't care. Okay, what if I put in strawberry syrup instead of chocolate syrup? What do I get? Strawberry ice cream. Wow, who would have thought? Strawberry ice cream. I'm just going to put straw ice cream. If I put in Oreos, what do I get? Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream ice cream. And if I put in milk, mint, not milk, mint and chocolate chips, what do I get out? Mint chocolate chip. There you go. You get mint chocolate chip. This is the same thing when we have a function. For the most part with functions, it's y and x that we're using. Do you know why we use the variables y and x? Um, no. Neither do mathematicians to tell you the truth. I tried looking it up once because I was curious. No one knows. It probably has to do with the Greek alphabet, but the honest opinion, we have no idea. But we've also related it to graphs. You've graphed before, right? Yes. Okay, are you comfortable with graphing? Yes. All right, so we have a graph. We put our x-axis here, put our y-axis here. So, With inputs and outputs, since it's something we usually want to graph, we use X and Y to easily get our ordered pairs. Even though it would be nice 
to use different variables. Like instead of X, maybe we use I for ingredients. We just don't because we want to relate it to the graph easily. Mathematicians are lazy, they're efficient, so they just choose one that would work across the board. Okay, so X and Y are something you're going to use over and over again. That's one reason we don't use X for the multiplication sign as we get farther along. Got it. We start using that dot because we'll get confused if it's a variable or not, which makes me wonder why they didn't choose something else, but who knows? All right, so just a simple thing, just to kind of get our brain rolling. We've got a function machine here. Don't worry, the function machine will go away if you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cheesy. It's okay. Well, it's not cheesy, it's creamy because it's ice cream. So name five numbers, any numbers you want. Four, six, two, eight, 11. Okay, we're good. We don't need to fill it up. Okay. So if we decided to input these numbers into this particular machine we have, okay, we input them. You can see here, we need to add X, whatever we decided was our input. We need to add 13. So what would be our output for the first one? Um, what, 15, no, 17. 17? Excellent. What the function needs to do. Now, the first function most people learn is y equals mx plus b. Does that look familiar? Yes. m and k are the same things. It's just when we first teach people, we teach them the k because we're not worried about y or b, not y. We're not worried about B. We just want them to know that it changes directly. But whether you use K or whether you use M, it's the same thing. It's the slope. Okay. We want to know the slope. I hate that I have to teach you guys K. I wish they would just keep it with M. They're lazy with everything else. Why aren't they lazy with this? But they aren't. Okay. So here, if I give you inputs, you can see y is going to change directly because what is happening to x? x is being affected by the 3. What is that 3 doing to the x? Um, it's multiplying. It's multiplying. Okay. In this thing, it's tripling whatever we're doing. So if I put in negative 2 and I triple it, what do I get? Negative 6. We get negative 6. If I put in 0, what do I get? Zero. Okay, if I put in one, what do I get? One. Three. Two. There we go. So on and so forth. We only have a few more minutes left, so this is perfect. So we're going to talk about this direct variation. So this table shows the number of meters a water skier, I always say skeeter, like the little water bugs, and then people are like, um. So this shows the number of meters a water skier travels in X amount of minutes. Y changes depending on how many minutes you're going, like how long you're going for. Okay, so Y is dependent upon X. What is changing X? Essentially, what is the speed for this one or the distance? How far is it going every minute? Meters. It's going 600 meters. So our function is the distance we travel is dependent upon how many minutes times by 600. It is Got going it. at a speed of 600 meters per minute. So our function is y equals 600 times x. Perfect. You can see this is a direct variation, okay? As x changes, y changes, and it's a linear function. It's straight. Got it. Excellent job. I think I just had one more question for you. Oh, nope, that was it. So uh, I'll let you out just a couple of minutes early, and I will see you on Tuesday. So enjoy your weekend, okay? You too. Bye. Okay. Bye.